Hello and welcome to the Division 3 podcast um, on a very bright and sunny morning here in the UK on race day. I'm joined by by Robertson. Robert, well, Robert someone. I'll still do it. How you doing? I, I'm, I'm great and it's a bright and sunny day in Romania as well. Excellent. Excellent. Hopefully it is bright and sunny around the mean streets of Baku. Well... I think most of us hope that anyway. I hope for rain. Ah, uh, you would, yeah. Yeah, you would. You would. Yes, I would. <laughs> Indeed. Um, yeah, obviously just going to run through um, Bahrain. Um, have a look at the, the stand-ins as well, because this is way more interesting standings wise I think than the other two divisions in the in the sense of the proximity of the drivers um, and look at a little bit of a preview for for Baku so, awesome. so yeah um, qualifying was an interesting event at Bahrain there was a lot of um, a lot of decent times not much in the way of overlap with Division 2 which was nice to see um, so yeah I don't know if you want to take us through through qualifying sure I will uh, pole position Adri with a 127.1 on the mm. soft tires you know mm. I actually thought that I had a chance uh, of getting pole position obviously it, it didn't happen and Adri had the quicker lap Mm. But I would say, overall, the qualifying results um, are really close. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we'll see that when we go down to James uh, in second with a 127.2. So, really, really close to Adri. I mean, James did set the lap on the Super Soft. Yeah. Um, I guess we have to keep that in mind, but still, um, really close to the top. Then we had myself in third with a 127.3, so just two tenths of pole. Uh, again, on the soft tire, we had Morgan uh, in fourth, one tenth of uh, of my time. Mm. A bag of bones in fifth, one tenth of of uh, Morgan. Uh, then we had our second super soft runner in sixth, uh, Ryan Ryan B mm. with a 127.6. Uh, seventh and eighth again really close times Jabo in seventh 127.685 uh, Zuidema in eighth 127.687 um, Heated in ninth 127.7 and LFC running off the top 10 on the super soft tire 127.8 So the top 10 overall was just shy of seven tenths apart from each other yeah, and the, it's quite funny to look at because although the gaps aren't, obviously some of the gaps were closer or further apart depending, but you know, if you go run down from 1st through to 11th, it's uh, 27.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18,
if you do a really good lap, you're going to be thinking, like, well, I've, still, I've got a chance of pole here, whereas perhaps, um, not saying that people didn't necessarily, but I think last season, perhaps people were thinking a bit like, oh, even if I do a good lap, it'll probably get me about fourth or maybe third or, or something like that. So I just feel like perhaps people are able to get that little bit extra out of their laps, which is, which is nice, which is good. Yeah, that that's true. I guess this sort of plays a a big role uh, in terms of our mentality. Mm. And I like the fact that the newcomers are are really making a name for themselves, and they are, you know, they are able to to beat most of the guys that have been racing with us for a while. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's that's good to see. Moving on uh, again. Uh, in 11th, as you said, was Fuzz uh, with the final time in the 27th, 127.9. Car Cannon in 12th, uh, 128.1. Then we had Mike in 13th. He's the quickest medium runner. Mm. Uh, 14th, Ghost Recon. 15th, uh, Tenayant, which we'll talk about a bit later. Mm. Uh, 16th, we have Emperor. No Bellon. Uh, for for Bahrain, no. unfortunately. Uh, Ibo in 17th, and then Maka running off our uh, our division without setting a lap. Hmm. I... I guess we could move on to one of the events that happened that got discussed in the stewards' room after the race. Yeah. Uh, and it in, in, uh, sorry. It's uh, it's pretty early. I just woke up. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty early. It's like two p.m. <laughs> I mean, it, it's one thirty p.m. But one thirty is it only an hour and a yeah. half. The gap. Wait, wait, is that? Oh, I'm retarded. Okay, this is not going well. I was looking at my screenshot on my phone. I had the time up there. <laughs> oh, okay, right. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well, whatever. You do you. It's fine. I'm not going to judge. Okay. You can be tired at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's your business. <laughs> so it is 1.52, actually. Good. All right. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> um, well, this is embarrassing. <laughs> this is the Division 3 podcast for... Yeah, people that haven't seen this <laughs> yet. A little less polished than our uh, <laughs> Division Two. Uh, A lot less rivals. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah. So tonight, he is the man in question. <laughs> mm. He actually retired on track, which I think Gary has put in the Discord about six or seven times. But we shouldn't do that. Yeah. Um, and because he retired on track, Car Cannon had to, to basically avoid him mm. and invalidate his lap. And so Tenayant has gotten uh, a quality ban and a few penalty points on his license. And this is a lesson for basically every driver, just start retri uh, retiring on track. We've said mm. it a lot of times before. If we have to say it again, that means you're going to get a penalty. Yeah, yeah, and it's um, it's one of those things. It's just like no, nobody um, retires on track to, well, except Michael Schumacher in Monaco, but no one kind of, or Nico Rosberg, <laughs> but no one retires on track in quali to affect other people's laps. But they're saying that we've all played this game enough now to know that it can so there's not really an excuse for it now yeah, it's not that hard to just finish your lap go into the pits and, because nobody will get mad at you if you're the last one running and uh, you're just driving towards the pits Th there is a it's really easy happens. way to avoid it like a real uh, well there's one easy way to avoid it on one of the runs, which is just go out with three minutes left and then you don't run the risk of having to retire 
because you'll cross the lot, you'll cross the checkered flag, and the session will be over. Obviously, I know that won't happen for the other two runs, but it's. Um, I know if everyone did that, then the track might be a bit crowded. But you that's know. what I was going to say. <laughs> Don't necessarily follow this advice. <laughs> yeah, not everyone do. Uh, so yeah, no, I don't know that. That tends to be if I'm worried about getting in people's way. Tracks like Baku aren't a problem, but you know, for your Monaco's and for I'm trying to think, Singapore probably, um, maybe even Brazil actually, because there's not much in the way of straights. There, you know, this is hard to get out of people's way, but it's not really a problem at places like Bahrain and Baku. People need to look at Ibo's laps uh, on every track. That's yeah. how, you, how you learn where to to go off and let people through. I think Ibo's the best example at this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it was a bit of an innocent mistake, and he's got a quality ban for it, and it's kind of taken on the chin. He's quite a nice guy. I think he understands. So. Um... I mean, of course, we're not. Uh, we're not saying this was on purpose because no. it, it wasn't. Um, it's just something that we need to avoid from now on because it's not it's not pleasant when you're in a, you know on a good lap and uh, mm. that sort of thing happens to you. But then again, I don't think we'll see this happen uh, at least here at Baku. Mm. Yeah, agreed. Um, but yeah, no, there's um, not much in the way. Not much else to say, really. I mean, the one thing I would just point out with you guys in D3 is that if you look at the tyre choices compared to D1, they were very different. A lot of the Division 1 guys were going super soft to uh, medium. Um, D2 was quite mixed, and D3 was more conservative, which was um, which actually used to be more the other way around, really, if I'm honest. So... That was intriguing to see. I didn't anticipate that. I think it just depends on the track. Yeah. But then again, most of us in D3 do seem uh, to be a little bit more conservative. Especially since, you know, we're all really close to each other. Uh, we have to take care of the tires and race people, so... I think yes. this was a sensible choice for the most of us. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, the race was very, very, very action packed. Actually, um, a lot of a lot of interesting points. I really enjoyed watching it. Inton, if you want to take us through it, um, well, you're gonna have to give us some some details. Ah, true, true. I mean, for the start, I mean, it. One of the guys. There was a few incidents, not nothing like terrible actually, but the guy that I felt very sorry for, uh, well two guys really, was both Ryan and Bag of Bones losing it over the curb um, on the exit of, I believe it's turn 12, I think. I think it's turn 12, um, with the dodgy curb on the inside. Yeah, um, I think it's 11 or 12, I'm not yeah. sure. I think most most people will know the one we mean. Um, yeah, and, and both of them DNF'd. It's pretty much a straight DNF if you lose the car there. Sometimes you get lucky and get a red wing, but not very often. And yeah, Bag of Bones was in second. I think Ryan was running somewhere in the midfield, but Bag of Bones will feel really, really, really uh, annoyed. I think he was quite annoyed <laughs> after the race. Um, but yeah, other than that, I believe, <clears throat> I believe everybody finished, to my knowledge. I believe everyone actually, um, which is a really good rate. Yes. 16 guys finishing yes. a race um, out of 18 it, starters. I don't think it happened before in, in Division 3. Yeah, maybe not. I don't think we only had two, two DNFs. Yeah. No, I don't think so either. Um... But yeah, no, I mean, the, the battles were great. There were some fantastic battles between, I think, Morgan and Adri were 
very close in the end. I mean, the midfield was really interesting. From well, I say midfield. I mean, the podium situation was really interesting. You got the podium. Obviously, you got a. Uh, there wasn't many penalties flying around, but penalties really cost. Um, well, I say that they only cost one person. Sorry to rub yeah. it in. <laughs> um, um, just looking at that. But it yeah, cost just you a lot. It cost you a hell of a lot, really. Um, that was quite unfortunate. But yeah, it's, I mean, we've kind of obviously kind of alluded to to what's been going on a bit. But I think Jabbo and James were a bit unlucky as well. I think they got caught up in some incidences. I think Maka had to pit on lap one as well. Um, it was not not a bad race. I mean, the Ghost Recon's uh, connection was playing havoc. Um, he is going to wire his connection. He was in a wireless connection. Um, it's my understanding. I think I kind of spoke with him about that. But that was really impacting. Um, that was really impacting the grid, actually. So LFC was particularly impacted um, and ended up starting 15th because of that five second um, penalty from hitting, we think, what was Ghost. Um, interestingly, Ghost, we, me and Wave had him at different parts of the track. So I think I had him at the right place, but Wave just had him like flying around randomly in front of Adri sometimes or by, <laughs> running last by a minute and then flicking into where I could see him. But So that was pretty crazy. Um. All right, uh, because I remember seeing uh, those recon just driving through my car at some point in the race. Oh, okay, that would, that makes sense. So, so I guess all of us um, basically raced ghost recon. <laughs> like his name, he tr truly was a ghost. <laughs> he was. He was. Um. But yeah, no, it was it was fun to watch. It was quite clean as well, which was always nice to see. Um, the, I mean, uh, Adri was very very imperious in the way that he drove, um, and I was practicing with Adri beforehand, and I was literally as quick. There was nothing between us at all, um, so I had a feeling he might be quite good here. Um, and he was and he was and he was he took a a very very comfortable victory I don't know whether it was necessarily uh, well it wouldn't have been from from pole to finish with well it might have been actually I don't know I have to look that back but I don't think it was I don't it, it wasn't mm, okay. but he needed that as well which was nice um, but Morgan did a very good drive as well and yeah, we'll, we're going to talk about Morgan, I think, more on the Azerbaijan side. Uh, Zwaidema with a very, very nice uh, podium as well. And yourself, I did feel a bit bad for you. I have to be honest. Yeah, I, thought, I thought you were going to get a podium. I really did. Um, obviously, just just taken out by the, by the penalty situation, which stuck you. 2.7 behind Zwedema, but you were uh, 0.3, I'm guessing. You must have been 0.3 ahead yeah. on track. Um, heated wasn't far he behind. Made mistakes, so he I'm made not that mad. He made a lot of mistakes. Do you mean, or was it? Do you say you or or was Zwedema? Not myself. Oh, okay. Especially at the end when. Uh, I felt the pressure mm. from Zedema. <clears throat> I made a lot of mistakes and I lost. I think I must have lost about three or four seconds to him. And then, of course, adding up the three seconds of penalties, I finished third on track and got uh, got a fourth place finish overall. Yeah, it's a good result though. It's your best result of the season, isn't it? So far, yes. So far, definitely. I'm almost confident that it's going to be so far. There's a couple of races coming up that you might be good at. Um, Hopefully. 
better, better, I say good at, I mean, very good at, but, um, he did, yeah, a, a great result, he, <laughs> I think he's kind of getting a bit annoyed at coming fifth all the time, <laughs> like, um, he's always, well, I mean, his time will come, let's just give it that, I, I think so too, I do, um, but yeah, good, good, and you know, just, and in the battle as well for the podium, not, you know, you look at Car Cannon, who was eight seconds off Car uh, Heated, who was not in the battle. A very good result for Car Cannon, though, to be fair, um, considering yeah, he qualified. For, uh, for our team. Yeah, good points for you guys. I think that's our best result, team-wise, since Monaco. Uh, yeah, yeah, 20 points. So, that will be... Yeah, definitely. Almost, yeah, almost certainly. Um... And then you got guys like Fuzz and Mike and Jabbo who seem to have their own battle. I think James, something might happen to James. I'm almost confident it did. Um, he finished in 10th. James must have lost his front wing somewhere. Yeah, I feel like he did as well. I can't remember when. I think he spun a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, I, ooh, I don't know. I don't want to misremember, but I'm almost certain he spun twice. At the end of one of his stints, I might be wrong, but I'm I'm almost certain that he did spin twice. I think I saw him spinning once actually, so that's why I, that's why I said it. Mm. Um, it was a week and... ago. I, can't I just I <laughs> barely I'm barely able to speak. So. Yeah, <laughs> my memory is not is not perfect. And um. We've got a bit of an advert for the point system here as well, which was LFC and Emperor, who had um, not the cleanest of races. Um, well, I don't know about Emperor actually, but I know LFC had some troubles. Um, and they come 11th and 12th, way behind 10th, but we're in a battle for points. Um, so that's really good to see. That's uh, And Ghost wasn't that far away from the Miva, from memory. So... It meant there was still stuff to battle for, whereas uh, in a 10-point grid situation, everyone from 11th down was just would have been out so far out of it. So hopefully that added a bit of spice for those guys, and uh, LFC picking up two points and Emperor picking up one. Yeah, that's good. It, it must have made the race a, a bit better. Um, I've been in the situation where I had to, to fight for 10th, to get that one point and mm. I actually think it's a lot more fun uh, when you're fighting for one point than when you're fighting for a podium I, I, I don't know why but yeah this is it and this is I see a lot of people in not necessarily in this league and another league that I drive in on a Tuesday they'll have a lap one incident they'll pit they'll be at the back and then they'll retire on like lap four but the funny thing is they're quite quick and you think okay you'd have probably caught me <laughs> like, I, I, there's more sometimes it is more fun I've had I've had races like that where I think Silverstone a couple of seasons ago where I was way off like t like last and 14th or whatever it was and then people just started DNFing and uh, it was quite fun just watching <laughs> people DNF and uh, eventually I think I got a point it was fun. Like it was, it was a different type of fun. Um, you're, you're basically just testing yourself. Yeah. Much. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, recovery. It's. I think it's quite fun to try and make a good situation, well, a good situation out of a bad situation. Um, yeah, and I've had and some... the other thing is, when you're fighting for, you know, for tenth place, uh, you're gonna push yourself to the limit. If you're battling for a podium. You're not gonna be as, uh, you know, as quick, as relentless. You're gonna have to be a lot more careful, since you don't want to lose that spot. Yeah, 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 definitely. Running for one point just makes it that much more fun. Yeah, you got nothing to lose. Um, exactly. But yeah, no, I think one thing I'm. Looking at how that affects the standings is really interesting. Um, Adri, who was nowhere really, well, not nowhere, but comparatively nowhere, is now top with 43 points. 
after his 25 point haul um, yeah and then we've got uh, B Morgan on 39 um, who is very consistent and got obviously got two podiums um, but the gaps are really small we've got two guys on 35 and another on 34 we've got Bag of Bones and Jabber on 35 and Zawada Moore on 34 Heated is doing really well with a f uh, sixth and two fifths and that puts him in sixth on 28 points and then Clark Allen 21 James on what is James on 18 alongside Fuzz and yourself on 16 and everyone from Ozone Mike Ibo Frey Ghost Recon Wuta and LFC and Maka I should say and Emperor Rub has got points so basically only the reserves uh, cannot get points so far yeah yeah well Ryan yeah, Ryan and Bellon. Uh, Bellon needs to actually turn up and race. That would be handy. Hopefully we see him this week. I believe we're seeing him this week, so that'd be good. Um, yeah. But very well, close. Speaking of this week, we have uh, a preview of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Hmm. And I think this is going to be rather interesting we have one driver in Division 3 that's going to humiliate, potentially, a half of the grid in Division 2. <laughs> ah, dear. Yeah, probably. Ah, I agree. Well, at least one person is going to humiliate. I, I know that. Well, you know, we're basing our, our, uh, our opinion on time trial, so it, it might not be... I think it's the, the clearest of answers, but <clears throat> if uh, if he manages to pull off that sort of time in qualifying, then uh, yeah, we yeah, we're a victor. Um, we are obviously talking about B Morgan. Um, yeah, very quick, great time trial times. Um, I have to say though. The one thing about Azerbaijan is it is not how quick you... I think this is... I think Monaco holds less problems than Azerbaijan when it comes to corners. That you, because There is so much risk-reward at Azerbaijan. Like, if you're going to take the castle, how you take it on time trial when you're trying to get your best lap possible, unless you are very talented at this game... And I've seen guys do it. I've seen guys like Killer Blue in Division 1 take absolutely crazy lines. And I've seen them do it in practice, and that's how they take the corner. But I don't think you can replicate your time trial lap 20... Uh, is it... How many laps is this? 26? Yeah, 26 times. Um, and finish the race. Or well, you world. don't have to, to do it 26 times. You just have to do it once in qualifying. Yeah, no, you're right. You and are right. Just try to lead the race from them. Yeah, because there's no. The funny thing is, is that whilst you can take, you can gain a lot of time there. Um, there isn't a massive incentive to necessarily try, because if you're ahead anyway, um, because no one's getting past you anyway, really. For well, until the straight, maybe the last corner. Yeah, well, yeah but it's not that difficult to defend on on the straight since you're just gonna manage your ERS until the end yeah. and overtake and then there you go yeah true true um, yeah so obviously Morgan's kind of the favourite um, as Adri was last week the one thing I'll say that I'm quite pleased about is that the favourite seems to swap every week um, I think Zwadema was favourite in Australia I think in Mexico, I'm not really too sure who was the favourite. Um, but last week was Adrian Morgan this week. So, yeah, I think people... Uh, I said this before about Division 3. Um, I think people were just going to have their favourite tracks um, yeah, and do well at them. I can't wait for my favourite track. <laughs> yeah, you're the only... Uh, well, not the only one, but there's a few sick individuals out there that like your favourite track, but... 
<sighs> I was, I'm just gonna say this. Right now, uh, hmm. Coco is gonna win Monaco. In Division 2. Yeah, I agree. Just out of the blue. Just gonna say it. And I'll, I'll bet money on that. <laughs> Not agree. a lot of money, but. Uh, I can't even I'm disagree. I can't. He's yeah. very good. Very good at that track. Um, like you are in 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 D three at Monaco, right? But you also good at Azerbaijan. Um, last season um, you you got a podium here, didn't you? I did, um, and I think I will be on the podium again. Wow, I I um, I, I agree. I'm gonna be honest. I, I haven't think. I haven't had that much time to practice because I had three exams last week. Mm. That's why we we're basically the the latest to post the podcast. Right, one it thing I'm... Fault, really. <laughs> no, 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 no. To be fair, I wasn't the most uh, around this week. But one thing I'm going to do, um, and one thing that would be quite cool if you can do a little bit as well, I'm going to pick for next week's podcast. It's a bit of a different section. Um, and I'm going to focus on commentary as well a little bit, not majorly, but I'm going to highlight a team every week and then focus a little bit more about their race um, every week and that team will change. So, all right. But I'm going to let you pick. There is a formula to this and if no one believes me, you can you can screenshot this. Um, uh, well, I will screenshot how my formula has been done. Um, so this is random, I promise you. Um, just pick a number between uh, 1 to 22. Uh, 22. Okay. So, we will be focused on... I'm hoping they attend... <laughs> You've picked a really annoying one. Um, you've, we've, you've picked Bellon, who has not raced the first three races. Um, so we've got Sauber. Uh, we're going to focus on the Sauber guys, um, which will hopefully be Emperor and Bellon. If it's not, and it's one of the reserves, then great. Um, but we'll focus. So is that numbering system really that random, since Bellon is 22nd in the, in the title championship? No, it's not random at all. Um, but I thought I'd just, all right. you know, um, I yeah. thought I, I, it was the bluff that did it. it you know, yeah, I should have picked ten. Yeah, you should have. Um, but no, we'll focus on the Salba, and then maybe what we'll do is we'll cycle through um, backwards on F one eighteen's menu, which people can see here when this goes up. So maybe then we'll do McLaren, then Haas then Toro, then Renault, Williams, Fawcett. Or well, maybe we'll do it something a little bit more special. Maybe we'll mix it up. Um, yeah, I think yeah. for Cindia, we'll have to talk about it after Monaco. <laughs> okay, all right, maybe. I think that might be a fair shout. But yeah, um, my, pre my only advice, I suppose, to everyone um, is the strategies are really, really not straightforward and I would definitely practice on all available compounds if you can because the weather here is surprisingly dynamic it is surprisingly changeable um, and it is uh, there's a lot more rain than perhaps most people might think in the lobbies um, so yeah that would be my only advice and try and get some wet running because especially if you do racing line because that racing line is trash in the in like inters. I can confirm. It is terrible. Um, and the pits as well. Please practice the pits. I'm looking at you, James, who crashed in the pits this time uh, last season. Um, it's quite a funny pit entry on worn tyres. I think it's a funny pit entry overall. Yeah. It's very dangerous, like most of the tracks. Still can't believe it's been allowed to. I can't believe this isn't actually a Formula One race, if I'm honest. It's mental. But there we go. Um, right, and another thing we're going to do 
right? I'm gonna do this. I, I think we've talked about this before. I might even go back. I might even go back and just check if we've actually uh, done this every race for the podcast. You can probably hear that piece of paper getting ripped off. This piece of paper is the predictions table. I'm gonna get some predictions from Wave as well. But who is gonna score? Who's gonna come first, second, and third? And who's gonna score the most constructors' points? All right. So Morgan in first. Okay. Obviously. Uh, then we have. I'm gonna say Adri in second and myself in third. Okay. And All the right. constructors, I'm gonna say. Um, I'm gonna say Renault. So Adri and Fuzz. Cool. I will go first, you. Alright. I'm gonna go no pressure. second, heated. And I'm gonna go third. Ooh, I don't really know about third. Third's a tough one. Um, oh, who is fighting for this title? I'm gonna say Zwadema. That's an interesting podium. And I'm gonna be happy for Heated, to be honest, more than for myself winning. And I think I think that w- would be his first podium, right? Um, in a in a league race, yes. And he did what I did, and did um, he got a podium in a pre-season race? Um, <laughs> well, how long did it take you to get your first podium? Oh, how long? Did, well, I've still never got a well, other than a pre-season race. Um, I've never had a Division 2 podium. And well, not, not necessarily Division 2. Oh, well, any podium. Um, yeah. So I joined the second race in, at the beginning, the first season of Formula 1 2017. Um, I never had a podium on 2017. Uh, my first podium was Bahrain. So that would have been, pff, I'm going to say something like 36 races, 37 races. There you go, so- cheated you've got a lot of chances left yeah exactly um but i just think it's gonna reward people that keep it clean and i'm just suspecting i don't know enough about about um the guys like morgan and um well pretty much everyone really that i haven't really driven with but anyone that i think is going to be very quick they need to there's still very big question marks as to whether they can keep it on the island the whole way around. So I know that guys like you and Heated have got the common sense to not battle where it might affect you. Well, if, if you look at my my race in Australia, then um, it, it wasn't you know that clean. Yeah. But then again. I have a chance to do something good and really turn my season around, around the, around back. Yes, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I think other than that, um, yeah, we'll keep an eye out for the Salvers tonight. Um, that'll be quite fun. Whoever's going to be jumping in those, and yeah, good luck to everyone, I guess. Um, how, okay. I'm gonna. How many finishes are there gonna be? One last prediction. I'm intrigued. We'll add this as well. We'll add this. How many finishes? Um. I'm gonna say. Ten. Ten. I think it's gonna be a mad race. <laughs> I'm gonna go seven. D three has historically always had the most. You know, the most finishes out of any division. So, um, I'm hopeful, but I just think there could be <laughs> a lot of places that people might crash. Um, and I'm not, I, I, I don't think there'll be many more in the, the other divisions either, if I'm honest. But no, I'm looking forward to, to watching it. Um, you, it'll be me and Wave later. Um, and that'll be on the main channel. So, hope you guys tune in. Um, but yeah, other than that, I suppose any any last thoughts or comments at all? 
I stop retiring on track. Stop Thank retiring you. on track. Yeah, fair. Cool. See you at Baku.